yeah, it sucks that, sorry for the language, but that I'm 36 years old and this has happened to me, but... <laughs> well, what do you call it? Terminal. It's terminal. Yep. Something like that, it's, it's always hard because we think, in, in our minds, we want to go on the way we are forever. As seasons change and the days get shorter, cells and leaves divide, blocking life-giving nutrients that allow the natural pigment inside the leaf to come to the surface. The result? A captivating bouquet of red, yellow, and orange that ignites the landscape. Scientists have discovered how leaves change, but still don't know why, only that it happens every year. After all, I had a lot of good years. And good things have happened. Experiences that other people haven't had. And, uh, I've been very blessed. Doctors found cancer in Richard Bradford's bladder six years ago. It was a very mild form at that time. They had nice, easy answers for a few years, but then it uh, just got worse, we'll say, and uh, the time came when the doctors down at uh, the um, Huntsman uh, uh, said to him, oh, you're, uh, we, we can't really help you. We can help you, but we can't cure you. We, we can give you some more time and make you more comfortable. But uh, you're, you're essentially on the way out. And they can't give me a time. Bradford served in the U.S. Army in Korea, taught high school, raised six children, and loved one woman for 56 years. Come on over here, and then you won't have to be in the limelight afterwards. Come here. Ellen has stood by Richard's side through all of the ups and downs of life, and now she gently holds his hand as his life slowly falls from the tree. The secret is that when you get down to this point, that you can somehow convince your wife that she's the best thing that ever happened to you. Richard sits in his lazy boy chair at his home in Logan, Utah, a place he and Ellen have lived nearly their entire married life. His children know he will soon die, and they try and spend as much time with him as possible. You think, oh, I'll do that when I have time and you realize you don't know how much time you have. Because we have knowledge that, that we will live after we die, it's much easier to accept that kind of diagnosis. So we know we'll say goodbye for a while, but we have the hope of being together again. That hope makes dying a little easier for Richard Bradford. He truly laughs in the face of death. One minute, he's doing a standard routine about taking out the class cap. I can't put up with this. <laughs> Next, he puts on a pair of bug eyes under his glasses. Instead of dying, he's killing it. Sometimes I... Tell kids that I was in Mr. Bradford taught at Logan High School for 35 years. His students thought he looked like Orville Redenbacher and decorated the school with his face on their own appointed Mr. Bradford Day. At noon, I kneel on my knees and thank the Lord for what I was doing, able to do, and pray that I would not damage those kids, and I'd be able to help them. But I said, 
far more important than that is the fact that a lot of those kids are coming here from homes where their parents have prayed and are praying that I will not damage them, but that I will be useful to their, in their lives. I didn't also mention that there are kids at home that want to know what Mr. Bradford did today when they come home for supper. Richard's granddaughter, Hannah, has carried on his teaching legacy. Teaching is fun, and at least that's the perspective I had of it. He made it fun, and he loved his job. He believes in failing. He lets, he let his, you know, he, he told his students, like, it's okay if you make a mistake, it's okay if you fail. He just wanted to help people get better. And but Hannah and his other grandchildren know their grandpa will never get better. So they treasure every moment they have left with him. For everybody, it is the hardest thing people go through their entire life. Dan Judd works for hospice as a chaplain and spiritual counselor. Every day, he visits people who are dying. In a casual conversation with a stranger, you usually don't talk about Jesus or talk about love. It's, there's a lot of time before we get to the level that we're comfortable with other people to the point that we can talk about those things that are so close. But if you sing a hymn, all of a sudden you're singing, Jesus, the very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breast. And they go, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, Just the thought of Jesus helps them. Richard Bradford calmly waits his time. No fear, only faith. So that you can understand why I'm not worried about dying. And we smile because I'll be able to smell no main breath. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me. My name is Martha Rose. Cancer and chemotherapy have stolen much of the life out of 65-year-old Martha, robbing her of her youth, making her old before her time. Well, I started out with breast cancer nearly five years ago. And then two years ago, it metastasized into bone cancer. And I was doing fairly well. I had chemo every week, but I could function. I didn't feel the best, but I could drive and do things and, you know, function quite well. But then, a kidney stone, a mild heart attack, and the discovery of bone cancer. Totally, totally wiped out. It's so weak. So that's why I'm on hospice. There's just nothing that's going to make it better. Martha's daughter Emily takes a pause from her own life to sit by her dying mother's side. It's hard. I won't get a teary, but she has like the best attitude of anybody I know and sorry. Despite the pain and sorrow, they still find room for laughter. They come in to say hi to her half the time and I'm just like, oh, hi, I'm here too. <laughs> Anna, the nurse, visits Martha several times a week. You know what, let's, I don't know if you even need the humidifier. Checking her vitals and making her as comfortable as possible. A person's death is the most important day of their life. We all live to eventually die. <laughs> Knowing that she won't be a part of the coming seasons of her family's lives isn't easy for Martha Rose. But she says her family and her faith in God makes this linger at death's door easier to accept. Well, what do you call it? Terminal, it's terminal. Yep, but I'm okay with it somehow. I just, I just have this peace that, like I said, 
things will happen when they should. Remember the best times, the laughter, the song, the good life I lived while I was strong. I guess when you say, who's Paul, I, I include my family in that answer because they are me. We are one all together. At only 36 years old, Paul Moore thought he would have a lifetime to share with his wife and two daughters. But back pain and lumps found on his chest and head turned out to be the beginning of his end. And it was February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Uh, I was sitting in the emergency room with my brother and my sister-in-law. My wife couldn't be there because she was um, taking one of the kids home. Where they just basically came out and told me, you, know, you have multiple masses inside your body, you have cancer. I just remember I, uh, I wasn't scared for myself at that time. Um, I was, I was scared for my wife and kids and who was gonna take care of them. His wife, Joni, heard the bad news on her cell phone as she filled her car with gas. It felt like Somebody just grabbed my heart and gave it an Indian burn and pulled it into two and threw it in the garbage can and lit it on fire. It hurt. I mean, physically hurt. Joni met Paul at a fundraiser at Utah State University. I was manning the ticket booth and he walked in, he had like a group of, I don't know, five guys with him and he had on. He had his hat on backward and he was, um, he walked in and he like made a joke and you could tell everybody in the room just, it, that he was with thought he was so funny and, and, I, and I, I, I'm like a magnet for people who have a good, you know, good sense of humor. So um, I saw him make a joke and I was like, he's cute. He's really cute. But Paul had already set his sights on the cute blonde at the ticket counter. So I thought it was awesome. I was like, I'm going to get to meet her one way or another because she's, she's taken my ticket. And that moment was just the beginning. Probably made me laugh more than anybody else. He's just a good guy. Especially after our first date, we weren't apart for more than like a day, you know, until way after we were married. Just because, and it was never a question of if I'll see you, it's if I'll see you tomorrow. You know, even after the very first date, we just knew, you know. You gotta say cheese. Three-year-old Reese doesn't understand what's going on. No, we better not. But five-year-old Ellie, is aware of what the cancer will do to her dad. Candy cancer. And what, what does that do? It makes a mean tea cat. She's crazy, she's doing well. Paul fought hard to stay with his family. He's undergone multiple surgeries, treatments, and therapies. But it was when, probably about in August, they came and said all the treatments, all the stuff you've been going through to try to beat this, it, it's not working. And that was, that was actually harder to hear than anything else just because um, it kind of dug everything up again and there was a lot that happened, a lot of surgeries, a lot of pain, a lot of therapies and things that we went through thinking, oh, okay, I'm suffering for something good here. But then when you're told that, it's just stab in the gut, you know? Left with no choice, Paul and Joni began to embrace the fact that only one of them would be raising their daughters. There was a time around, around when I first found out that uh, you know, I, was, I was sick. Um, and when you're sick like that, you just feel like the world's gonna end. There's, there's nothing 
positive that ever comes out of it. And I can remember just mustering all my strength, every, every piece of strength that I had uh, to just go and kneel and pray in my closet. I remember my, my uh, My blanket was wrapped around my shoulders, trying to comfort myself, and I just remember praying as hard as I possibly could in that moment, uh, and just asking for comfort. That's all I needed, because I, I didn't feel anything, and, and uh, I didn't feel any, anything in that prayer. But the next morning, everything changed. To realize this horrible cancer, this stuff that's painful every day, this could be a platform for good. And how many people can be touched by somebody simply looking at, at cancer straight in the eye and saying, you're not going to, you're not going to overtake me. People die every day, some without warning. There, there's a lot of emotion and you expect it and you know it's coming and you try not to you try to respect that and just pick your moments and talk to them the best that you can and you know that they're not hearing half of what you say once once you've discussed the fact that their loved one is deceased or passed away dr brett porter works in the emergency room and is the medical director of hospice it's always a shock in those situations hospice certainly is different um, most of the people uh, have an understanding that they're going to, that, that, that they have been deemed with something that limits their life. As a social worker, Shannon Rhodes helps people confront the reality of death. A lot of people are afraid of dying. They're afraid of the process of dying. And they're afraid of suffering, and they're afraid of the pain that comes with the dying process. On one side, Paul wants to die because he knows he's a burden on his family but he's glad he has this chance to let his family know how much he loves them. Who wants their life to be spelled out for him in advance? Yeah, it sucks that, sorry for the language, but that I'm 36 years old and this has happened to me, but <laughs> I mean, look what I have. I just have a, a gorgeous family and I've been so blessed to, to know them as long as I have and, and to still be here and, and just there's so much of life that we can enjoy. Continue my heritage. I'm counting on you. Keep smiling and surely the sun will shine through.